Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Miley Cyrus makes Billy Ray hang head in shame with outfit she wore on SNL last night, pic. Miley Cyrus went on Saturday Night Live last night and Billy Ray was hoping she would not attack President Trump again. He supports his daughter because he is a good father but must tell her privately that bashing Trump is not good for her career. Or he should. Billy knows celebrities need to keep their mouths shut when it comes to politics. Most don't listen but last night Miley did. She did not bash Trump. The same cannot be said for the rest of the cast. They trotted out the old standby Alec Baldwin to bash Trump and went after Mike Pence and Paul Manafort. Really not a good look for them. And speaking of bad looks, what Miley wore during one sketch made Billy Ray hang his head in shame as if to say Miley, why do you have to revert to your bratty past? Grow up already. We all have growing pains and we are forgiven for our past transgressions as long as we learn from them. It seems Miley has not. Source, NBC Screenshot. Source, NBC. Source, NBC. Share if you think it is time Miley grew up. Meltdown. Alec Baldwin forced to delete Twitter after disgusting thing he said to rape accuser. Leftist lunatic Alec Baldwin regularly provides us with meltdowns of the epic variety. This week, he did it again. His latest tirade saw him attacking rape victim Rose McGowan, who has allegedly attacked by Hollywood mega producer Harvey Weinstein. During an interview with PBS NewsHour, Baldwin claimed that the men of Hollywood have no responsibility to outknown sexual assaulters. Instead, he claimed that rape victims must be the ones to speak. You heard the rumor that Weinstein raped Rose McGowan. You heard that over and over, and nothing was done. We've heard that for decades and nothing was done, Baldwin said during the interview. When confronted with the fact that neither he nor his friends in Hollywood did anything about it, Baldwin went off. What happened was Rose McGowan took a payment of $100,000 and settled her case with him. It was for Rose McGowan to prosecute that case. The backlash on Twitter was immediate, including responses from Rose and fellow accuser Asia Argentino. Baldwin responded with a series of tweets in which he promised to suspend himself from Twitter. Let's hope he stays off Twitter for good. Comment shame on you. And share if you're disgusted by everything Alec Baldwin does. Kellyanne Conway just drop kicked Brian Stelter back to journalism school with one epic word. White House counselor Kellyanne Conway is always ready to bring the hammer down on hostile reporters. Conway got into a verbal sparring match on CNN's Reliable Sources Sunday morning and totally owned Brian Stelter. She started off by remarking about CNN's turn towards near manic anti Trump bias since, and even before, the election, saying, CNN used to be a place where people can tune in and get the news all day long. Now they get spin and people's opinions. I think CNN should own it. Why not say, look, it's in our commercial interest at CNN to be anti Trump. We're profitable if we're against the president, most of our viewers are against the president. Just own it. Stelter then tries to put words in her mouth with a weak Straman argument. I don't understand that you don't want an adversarial media, I guess you just want everybody to be like Fox News. Then Conway brings down the hammer and calls Stelter out big time. Stop being jealous of Fox News, Brian, and their ratings. I think that would help if you drop the jealousy a little bit about Fox News. One word here people jealous. These guys in the mainstream media actually can't come up with anything interesting or insightful to say so they usually end up just lobbing gross and misleading insults at the president and his administration. The exchange is simply hilarious. Check out the whole thing here. Love Kellyanne? Hate CNN? Share it out. H.T. The Hill
After Texas church shooting, Trump and Pence sent something heartbreaking from Japan. A church shooting in Sutherland Springs, Texas left at least 20 dead and 30 injured Sunday afternoon. While details on the situation are still sparse, President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence have both issued statements from their trip abroad in Japan. Those statements both refer to the power of God, a appropriate reference considering the scene of the mass shooting. Mary God be with the people of Sutherland Springs, Texas, Trump wrote, before assuring Americans that the FBI are hard at work on the situation. Pence went one step further than Trump, calling the shooter evil and sending prayers from him and his wife. While we await details from law enforcement and the FBI, we must send our prayers to the families involved in this epic tragedy. Let's send our support by commenting with your own prayer or by writing God bless. Share this article so the love and prayers get to those affected. We must appeal to the power of prayer, as this was a direct attack on individuals with faith. Did Donna Brazile just confirm everyone's worst fears about Seth Rich and the Clintons? In her new book set to be released this week, Donna Brazile makes a comment about Seth Rich that has all of America shivering. The former DNC chair conceded that the murder of DNC staffer Seth Rich haunted her, and that she feared for her own life, shutting the blinds so snipers could not see her. Check it out, via BizPack Review. Rich was murdered last year via multiple gunshot wounds in his Washington, D.C., neighborhood. Many have speculated that Rich was involved in releasing the DNC emails to WikiLeaks which revealed, amongst other things, that Brazile had sent debate questions to Hillary prior to a primary debate against Bernie Sanders. Many believe that Brazile's comments about Rich, quoted ahead of her book release, are intended solely to boost book sales. Others have received the quote as confirmation that Brazile thought more of the theories than conspiracy. Brazile has been making headlines this week after she penned an article for Politico that detailed how Hillary Clinton's campaign raided the Democratic primaries by entering into a financial agreement with the DNC one year before she officially won the nomination. She said to George Stephanopoulos on ABC's This Week that when it comes to critics, you know what I tell them? Go to hell. I'm going to tell my story. Here's the clip. Uncovered the Queen's dirty secret has been revealed, what's in it is shocking the world. A leak of confidential financial papers on Sunday revealed the secretive dealings of some of the world's largest businesses and executives, including the Queen of England and members of President Trump's cabinet, according to Daily Mail. In the largest haul of leaked documents since last year's Panama Papers, the Paradise Papers exposes 13.4 million files detailing the offshore wealth of some of the world's richest people. The leak reportedly centers around a firm called Appleby, which advises clients on legitimate and lawful ways to conduct their business, according to a statement. The firm continued, saying that it doesn't tolerate illegal behavior. There is no evidence of any wrongdoing either on the part of ourselves or our clients. Unlike last year's Panama Papers, there's been no suggestion of lawbreaking on the part of the firm itself or any of its clients. The legality of the accounts disclosed in the papers does not discount their shocking contents, however. They reveal, for example, that the Queen's large estate may have invested huge sums of money in tax havens. They also suggest President Trump's Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Rell Ross Jr., owns stakes in a firm that deals with Russian companies currently under sanction. Appleby reportedly owns offices in such infamous offshore account locations as the British Virgin Islands and Bermuda. Winning again. This woman just did something no American has done in 40 years. If you're an American fan of long-distance running, the last few decades have been hard to endure. The sport has been dominated by Kenyan runners who often shut out American athletes from medal podiums completely. In the case of the New York City Marathon, no American has won in 40 years. But no more. Sunday morning, American runner Charlene Flanagan won the New York City Marathon, the first American woman to win since 1977. 
she accomplished this feat by pulling away from Kenyan athlete Mary Kidney in the last three miles of the 26.2 mile race. If that weren't enough, this is Kidney's first major marathon win ever. As Americans, we're used to dominating in nearly every worldwide sport, but African athletes' grip on long distance running has been hard to break. With this accomplishment, we've finally done it on our home turf. It's nice to see America winning again. First we got Donald Trump, who has brilliantly revitalized our economy. Now we have Kidney, who is making marathons great again. Comment America first. And share to support American athletes. We need to send our runners some love.